Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to introduce the set of rational numbers. The set of rational numbers is defined actually using the set of integers, which we've talked about before. So remember, the integers were the set notated with a Z of all the positive and negative whole numbers. The rational numbers are usually denoted with a Q and they are any number that can be written as a over b, where a and b are both integers, and b just can't be zero. So if we think about the number sets that we already know, we know that within the integers, we have the whole numbers. Remember that the whole numbers were the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on or our positive counting numbers, including zero. Then we expanded to include the negatives, and that gave us the integers. Now we're expanding a bit further to include anything that can be written as the quotient of two integers. So let's take some numbers for example and see if we can classify them. So let's take a equals two. Starting with the whole numbers, is 2 an element of the whole numbers? Well, since the whole numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, and we find 2 in that set, then 2 is an element of the whole numbers. What about the integers? Well, 2 is a whole number, 2 is a positive counting number, so it is included in the integers as well. And finally, 2 can be written, in fact, in many ways as the quotient of two integers. Take, for example, 6 over 3. 6 and 3 are both integers, and 6 divided by 3 is 2, which means 2 is, in fact, in the rational numbers. So if we were to place 2 in this diagram, we could place it down here. 2 is a rational number and an integer and a whole number. So we place it in the center of all three. What about the value negative three? Negative three is not in the whole numbers. The whole numbers, remember, only include positive counting numbers. Negative three is, however, an element of the integers, since it is a positive or negative whole number. Negative three is also a rational number. We should note here that every number that is an integer is also a rational number because we can see from our diagram that the integers are contained within the rational numbers. So one way we could write negative three as a quotient of two other integers would be negative six over two. So if we were to place negative three in our diagram, we would place that inside the integer circle but outside the whole number. Now for our final example, let's talk about 5 over 2. So 5 over 2 does not simplify to become a whole number, so it is not in the set of whole numbers. 5 over 2 also does not simplify here to be a positive or negative whole number, so it is not in the integers. But 5 and 2 are separately both integers, therefore 5 over 2 can be written as the quotient of two integers, so it is a rational number. So we can place 5 over 2 inside the rational number circle, but outside the integer and whole number circles. So let's break down the parts of the rational number and talk about some vocabulary. So we've stated that we're going to typically see rational numbers written as some sort of quotient. Well, the top integer in that quotient, we call that the numerator. And the bottom number in that quotient, we call the denominator. And we call numbers written like this fractions. So the top part of a fraction is a numerator, and it tells us how many parts we have. And the bottom number in our fraction is called the denominator, and it tells us how many equal size parts make up a whole. We have a few different ways that we can model fractions or rational numbers. One of the first ways that we typically do this is what we would consider the concrete or area model. So here's the number one-fourth modeled in this way. Here we've taken a rectangle 
and we have divided it into four equal sized pieces and we have shaded one of them. So the denominator of four represents how many equal sized pieces we have. And the numerator of one tells me how many of those pieces are shaded or do we have. You could also do this with other shapes, perhaps a circle or really any other concrete shape. The next model we want to look at is the number line model. Here we take the values between two whole numbers, like zero and one, and we break them into however many equal sized pieces the denominator tells us we have. In this case, we're again modeling one fourth. So we can see that the space between zero and one has been broken into four equal sized pieces, and we have shaded or indicated one of those. So this is the number line model for the fraction one fourth. A third model we could use is what we would consider the set model. Here we have four equal sized items, whatever those items might be. In this case, we just have circles. And one of them is shaded. So here we're saying that there are four items in our set and we have one of them. So here are just three ways that you can model fractions or rational numbers with your students. Let's try that one more time, this time with the number 5 thirds. Because our denominator is 3, we want to break up the space between each whole number into three equal pieces. Here we have 0 to 1 broken into three equal pieces. And of course we can continue that pattern with the rest of the number line. Then, beginning at 0, we want to count 5 of those equal pieces. So, counting up, here we land at the number 5 thirds. All right, guys, well, that has been our introduction to rational numbers. Until next time, we'll catch you in a future video.